Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. Don't forget Shinrin Yoku bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, November 3rd, around 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. G2 geomagnetic storm currently in effect, and we're looking for G3, and we're waiting for what's happening in the next 24 to 36 hours. But the big story now, winter season starting off strong. More snow early this week. Keep calm. It's boom time. Trucky weather. Rain and snow possible for the next several days. Look at the snow from the mountains of West Virginia. Will you just look at it? Looking fantastic. First snowman made in Michigan. More than seven inches of snow has fallen in some areas. And he looks, well, quite happy. Shut up now. Get in your hole. First snow of the season is here for some. Coldest air in six months for central New York for everyone. As expected, the strongest lake effect rain, snow, and grapple showers have occurred directly east of Lake Ontario late Tuesday into Wednesday morning. And more is coming. We'll have the models in just a minute. No, we're not signing up. Prodigious Alaskan storm dumps record rain. 10 plus feet of snow. Ho, ho, ho. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. A powerful historic storm has walloped southern Alaska for days, unloading extreme amounts of precipitation and overwhelming its infrastructure in some areas. And, well, the global warmest predicted otherwise. Here are some of those ludicrous predictions now. As a headline, cascades heading towards a future with little to no snowpack, new analysis suggests. Now, if you read this article, it's going to tell you that by 2050, there could be no snow. Almost half the snow by 2030. And again, most people writing this article won't even be alive to see the facts right in their face. Heavy snow moving in through November. A November to remember in the West. Well, the Midwest and maybe... Even the Northeast, like a beast. The snow is not ending. Now, 15 years ago, the global warmest told us that there would be no more snow. And it's looking like one of the most incredible ski seasons for the West in some time. And those are the facts, folks. Below normal temperatures continue. Unsettled weather returns. For the Northwest, temperatures remain below normal for portions of Ohio, Tennessee, and the mid-Mississippi River Valley into portions of the plains. Meanwhile, temperatures will be moderating across the high plains by Friday, except frost and freeze warnings are everywhere. So, buckle up. It's chill time. Seven earthquakes in South Carolina in seven days is evidence of a release of geologic stress, the USGS says. Well, it could also be an uptick on the Appalachian Fault, which could be a precursor to a New Madrid event. Seismic update, no quakes of note. Worldwide, earthquake activity is at a lull, which is bad news. That means, well, something is brewing. And what's brewing is the sun. What looks to be an interplanetary shockwave has passed the Discover spacecraft about six hours ago, and we are now in G2 geomagnetic storm. Actually, it was now four hours ago, and we are waiting for the update here. My goodness. We could get up to KP8 in this event, and I'm just refreshing it here for your benefit. So we've now been at KP7, G2 geomagnetic storm for two hours. It is not affecting our connectivity here at Oppenheimer Ranch and or anywhere I can see on the interwebs currently. But the magnetometer is off the charts. Above and below the chart dynamics here, it's coming back into quiescence here, more normal activity. After that, here you can see the interplanetary shock wave hitting Earth. Boom! And now it is about, uh, yeah. About almost eight hours ago, so we should be getting some new KP indices coming soon. But the good news, and we'll refresh this, is the Aurora activity has now pushed into the United States. North Dakota, Minnesota, say it ain't so, yes, you could be seeing Aurora right now. Could be coming to Maine in moments. 
But Montana, Washington State, look up, go outside. This could be increasing, and we're keeping a close eye on it for you. Worldwide Volcano News Update. With increased space weather, we look for activity in earthquakes and volcanoes, and we have Reventador, Karimski, Semaru, Nevado de Ruiz, and Suanosima. Now, the big news is Karimskai, or Karimski, volcano, puffing to 28,000 feet. This is the highest level it has reached in years, and we're keeping a close eye on that activity. Now, La Palma also keeping a close eye there. Take a look at the ash that has been falling for up to four days. It's absolutely insane. And they've brought in some of the public workers here and the military to clean this area out because in the winter here that we're approaching, the rains begin. And when rains mix with volcanic ash, well, it's a no zone. It's a no go zone. Now, the good news is that seismicity, now here we're updating live, has been decreasing. Seismic activity overall over the last four days is going on a downward trend. Seismic tremor itself decreased ex extremely today. It's now rising slightly, but nothing spectacular. And the SO2 is reduced as well as seismic activity. Here we are um, looking at the last 24 hours, and we can see that there is now 80 plus 40 just under 120 quakes, 118 quakes, uh, magnitude 2 to 4, and the 5.0. So a reduced seismicity. And here we can probably come over to the 3D. Yes. And here I want to bring you to bring your attention to an, a unique pattern that's developing. In my opinion, as the volcano shuts down in the next four or five days. So just a few more days of eruptive activity and it will go quiet. We can see reduced seismicity over the last 48 hours, but when the sun sets, there is an increase in vol uh, earthquakes here. And here again, we're seeing the same increase in earthquakes as the sun sets towards midnight, about 2 a.m. On La Palma, there's an increase in earthquake activity. Very interesting. And I don't know what that means. As a geologist, volcanologist, I'm sure are looking into this pattern. I hope they are. But this is definitely the master's thesis. It's an amazing pattern that's developing as the seismicity as a whole for the last 48, now 52 hours, has been completely reduced. The most reduction since the volcano began. So probably a shutdown of the volcano. And that is our, our hopes and prayers for the people on La Palma. And we're going to come over here live. Now, here we are live at the volcano where you can see there is some increased seismic activity clearly happening tonight based on that pattern. But overall, there's almost nothing happening diffusively here at the volcano. Some lava is still coming out, feeding the tubes. But overall, it's a reduced seismic uh, realm completely in all aspects. SO2 is down. Seismicity in general is down, earthquakes are down, and lava flow is down, uh, and earthquakes are down. So everything is reducing at the volcano, which is good news. Now, some people, for some reason, don't want to hear this good news, and they think that I'm lying to them. But I'm just telling you the facts. That's what we do on this channel as a, a scientist. We simply report on the facts as they come into us. Now, we are we get some of the facts earlier than most people. So what we're reporting on is a day earlier than what you report, what you see coming out there. And a lot of you know what I'm talking about. So let's move on to Iceland, where we've been uh, reporting a potential major earthquake coming from Iceland. Uh, not the Reykjanes Ridge, but a large volcano erupting. Now... After we warned about five or six days ago about Tordafioko, no one in the world is talking about this. Iceland Geology put up this article on the 31st, corroborating what we were saying, long period, low frequency earthquakes increase in Tordafioko volcano. Now, this <laughs> volcano has not erupted since 1477, so that's why not a lot of people have picked up on this 
and why Oppenheimer Ranch Project is one of the first scientific groups to pick up on it because we know what we're talking about. Now, as a whole country, earthquakes during the last 48 hours, we're seeing reduced seismicity overall in Iceland, which is good news. Asia was still an uptick in some new activity there. So that's the main one we're worried about because this has historic eruption potential to VEI 4 and 5 kids. And that means a darkening of the skies and, well, ending aircraft travel and other things in, in this region. Grimm's Voten has a general increased activity overall on the entire glacier. So there could be increased activity on the Jokulips coming out on the rivers flowing south here. And ever, overall, Iceland is pretty quiet, but we're keeping a close eye on that. That could change rapidly as this ongoing geomagnetic storm occurs. Now, Tora Fiocal. <clears throat> here we are over at the uh, Smithsonian Institute Global Volcanism Program, and we're going to look at the eruptive history of Tora Fiocal, and it could potentially erupt up to VEI-3 back in 870 and potentially 2,000 years ago, VEI-3. 1477 was a VEI-2 eruption, so very little is known about this tephra producing um, volcano. So there's that. It's a stratovolcano, so it could be potentially explosive, which is why VEI-2 and 3 would potentially be 100 times more dangerous than what we're looking at at La Palma. Now, here's some bad news coming in the last few days from science, the silent buildup of a super eruption. Many people are wondering if there are precursors to a super eruption. Now, if you haven't heard, we've predicted many volcanic eruptions in the last five years on this channel and over at Oppenheimer Ranch Project, including La Palma. Three years ago, we predicted the Cumbre Vieja eruption would occur, and certainly it did. And now we're predicting the end of the eruption, and everyone's angry at us. But I have some bad news. We're talking about super volcanic eruptions. If you're one of the doomsdayers or the end of the earths or one of the religious nuts that think that the apocalypse is happening, it's not actually the apocalypse. It's a shift from one time frame to another. And I guarantee this next time frame is going to be much better and wholesome than the one we're currently living. Now, the unfortunate thing is there is no precursor to super eruptions. I'm talking VEI 6, 7, 8, the big boomers that darken the sky for 3 to 10 years, drop global temperatures up to 3C, and, well, reduce populations by 80%. So those volcanic eruptions, based on new scientific information, have no warning. Yeah, and that's a bad thing because growth and thermal maturation underneath of Toba has been happening for 70,000 years since the last mass extinction. And according to the scientists, and I'm a scientist as well, hello, I looked at this paper and I corroborate all their information. What they're saying is that there's no way to know when it's boom time, literally. That's boom but not the end of the podcast. So I will link you below to all of the articles and the fact that we will not know when Toba will blow. Ho, ho. Shut up, Al. He's always looking for the bunt cake. Now, a topic I've brought up several times in the last week, Bizarre Comet is dubbed as a giant space volcano because it keeps repeatedly erupting with so-called cryomagma. Then I pointed out how cryomagma is an oxymoronic. Well, it it's, doesn't even make sense. Frozen magma means, well, rock. So erupting with so-called rock as it cruises around space at around 26,000 miles per hour. These idiots in astrophysics and astronomy cannot grasp the fact that electrically charged rocks in space can discharge electrically and become illuminated, causing not only a plasma tail. Anyway, we'll get to that in a different... Anyway. Hello. More breakthroughs in climate science. Earth's orbit affects millennial climate variability. Holy shit! My entire master's thesis is on this one.
Way to go. Physics.org. You're picking it up because we put it down 30 years ago. Going to finish it up on a win. Literally, Finnish scientists have the balls to claim the effect of human activity on climate change is insignificant. Amen to the finish. As we finish up tonight, we're going to finish up with the Finnish scientists because shut up, Al. Al's finished. A new paper published by researchers from the University of Turku in Finland suggests that even though observed changes in the climate are real, the idiots observing them are assholes. And that's a fact, Jack. Thank you, Finland. And that's a boom. No, we still have more to go. Mysterious shards of glass in your <whistles> are strewn across miles of desert in the Atacama. And we finally know why. Did you know that five years ago I said the glass in the Atacama Desert was from a comet? And, and they finally know now what I said then. Oh, my God. Now, Strange Island on Google Maps sends Reddit users into a frenzy. And it's Vostok Island, which is not anywhere near Vostok. In fact, it's off the east coast of Australia. Yeah, the north northeast coast, I think. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's where they're showing it. And it's it's not black because it smokes crack or because Satan lives there. It's because of the angle of the dangle. And the fact that we are in a conceptual complexion of antidisciplinary medicinaries. You understand what I just said there? Yeah. A quagmire of conceptual complexity equals a strange island on Google Maps. Now, if you if you never heard the term quagmire of conceptual complexity, it's because I invented it 30 years ago. And it has to do with an overwhelming amount of information at the same time. And it blackens out. In this case, trees. Yes. The strange dark mass in the middle of the island on Google Maps, blowing up on social media with speculation, is not Nibiru. It's not a black hole. It's not the inner earth. Yes. It's trees. <laughs> so, those are the facts. And because there are so many pine trees on this island, it looks black at the angle of attack. And that's not whack. What is amazing is that I spent four hours designing the first Oppenheimer Ranch Project snow-capped cone t-shirt in white. It's going to take me a few weeks to get hundreds of more colors of this t-shirt up there. And this is a male shirt. There's no female versions right now. But they will come. But here is the beauty of the Oppenheimer Ranch Project snow-capped shirt. On the back side... Well, is the big reveal. Yes. Let's go, Brandon. And that is our newest design. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When Diamond is designing shirts in every color, men, women, children, elderly, hoodies, And, well, you can represent through Boom Knowledge. Be safe. We love you. Share these videos with like-minded people. Subscribe to the channel. Become a Patreon. And, well, we'll see you soon. And that's Boom. We love you. We love each and every one of you. Be safe.